It is six to eight days to the presidential and parliamentary elections. Good afternoon and welcome to the election brief. We're live on DSTV Channel 4 to 1. Go to TV Channel 1 to 5 on all our social media platforms and around the world on myjohnline.com. Election headquarters is brought to you by Petrosol Platinum Energy, Energizing Dreams, the Chattered Institute of Management Accountants, CIMA, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, together as the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants, also brought to you by German Ozone Medical Center, Alternative Therapy, Dental Wellness and Beauty, as well as Chopbox Technologies, a convenient service, and Youth Bridge Foundation, Bridging the Gap for Positive Youth Development. My name is Faustina Safo. Please stay for details. Thanks for choosing us for your home of independent, fearless, incredible journalism. The National Democratic Congress has launched its women's manifesto in the MPP's backyard, Kumasi, where the party has been outlining its vision for the empowerment and development of women in the country. The manifesto, which is a key component of the NDC's overall election campaign, promises to address the various challenges faced by women in Ghana, including limited access to education, health care and economic opportunities. We will delve deeper into what is contained in that document. But first, let's listen to the NDC's women organizer, Dr. Hannah Lois, um, Louisa Isu. She touched on key issues regarding the policies in the Women's Manifesto. In the past, women in numerous communities proudly earned a living through agriculture, trade, industries, academia, and many more to support their families. Women were not just tolerated, their views were sought after. Yet, our voices have been stifled under this NPP government. Women's empowerment has become a joke under this NPP government. How does a government justify sanitary parts as a luxury good? Adding period poverty to an already disproportionately, multidimensionally poor demography. When the same Harvard University, whose diplomas they flanked around, seriously, strongly advocates for free sanitary parts to end period poverty. Furthermore, the sanctity that our collective traditional values accord to motherhood is defiled as a pregnant woman was arrested in a rumble style operation by this Nana Ado Dankwa Baumia government. Her crime was that she protested the government's deafening silence and complicity in the ongoing Galamse menace. She wanted nothing more than a Ghana where she and all women like you and I will give birth to babies with their deformities and access to clean water. As a national women's organizer of the NDC, I resolutely believe that the disaster of the Akufu Ado Baumia government, those of us who seek to restore Ghana to her glory, must be decisive and sincere. Well, my colleague Nana Wachi Adam joins us live from KNUSC Great Hall, where the former president, um, John Dramani Mahama, and Professor Jane Nano Pokwajiman addressed the media. Let's cross over live to him. Sure, a 50 50 representation when it comes to his government. And I also have the member of parliament for the Asawase constituency here with me. Um, let's get to engage with the uh, member of parliament for the Asawase constituency, the Honorable Muntaka Mubarak. Honorable, today we've heard from the former president, John Mahama. He has laid out his vision for the Ghanaian women. Um, you have been um, a part of the NDC's activities, in fact, the previous government. How do we then trust the NDC to deliver on its promises for women this time around? Why, why, why can't we trust us? I mean, our track record is there to show. You all know that every government, you start and then you pick it up. And if you agree with me, that most of the promises that we made prior to 2016, 
you saw us executing them very seriously. I mean, the E block, uh, building hospitals. We started most of them. And as all of us know, you cannot use only four years to finish most of those things. So a lot of the things that we started, is just a continuation of it. And I can bet you most of the things that is essence is the same for the women. Are you telling me that we are, even with all the challenges that we have today, are you telling that we cannot find $20 million to establish a women's bank? <laughs> Look at the waste that is going on. Even the vehicles that we buy from the presidency alone, <laughs> we can generate $20 million that can be used to create the women's bank. Are you saying that building... Uh, what do you call it, uh, a pediatric hospital is not possible. Look at the, the, the what do you call it, University of Ghana Medical Center. We built it. And that's 600, that's about what do you call 650 beds hospitals. Now we are talking about 500. So we built 650, why can't we do 500? I mean, if you are talking about uh, what do you call it, uh, support for the hijab, making sure that everybody is able to manifest its religion. You remember, it's one of the present that sat in, I mean, in the state of the nation. Go and check 2013, 2014 state of the nation. He said it. That, look, let's allow ourselves, everybody. You saw the Rastafarian in Atimota when he went to court. The, the court said that no, he was right to keep his Rasta. And now he's kept his Rasta. He's among the best students that came out of Atimota. And now he's, he's in Harvard. So those things do not change. All the things that his essence has said about women. Tell me which one is not possible. Is it the, 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 the free part? If we can provide tissue paper in almost every washroom, why can't we provide the same sanitary pad in every washroom? So that any woman who enters any washroom can just pick a pad when, she, when she's in that time of the period. Why should they fail to be able to go to school because there's no pad? It is something that is doable. If you look at the, my, uh, what you call it, Ejumawura, that we are saying, come to us once and see. We are already doing this since 20, uh, what you call it, 15, where you've been to most of our programs, where you see that we send them for training. After training, we give them those equipment. Even if a small concession like Aswansi were able to do it, you are saying that the government cannot do it. These are things that we have tested, and we are capable of doing them in a very easy way. So we want the woman in Ghana to trust his excellency John Dramani Mahama, not because he's saying that he will do. Look at what he was able to do. Look at the markets that he was talking about. When you come to the Kumasi city, most of the markets that we have, the biggest, KDTR, we built it, go to Tafo, we built it, Aswansi, we built, Atosu, we built. Look at the hospitals, even in, uh, in, in Kumasi. Mensha Hospital, we expanded it. Go and look at Sewa, look at the, what do you call the military hospital in Kumasi. We have a lot of, JM has a lot of track record to show. So for you to trust that anything that he says is capable of doing it. But, but people are saying that you're saying we are, we are bankrupt, the country is suffering, we do not have money. How then do you promise 20 million for women's bank, building new markets, and even to the extent of building hospitals with hostels for women when they are going to see their children? You simply ask us how much are these things going to cost? You and I know that yes, the government is restructuring our debts and obviously crowding the market for loans especially non-concessional loans. But even today, we continue to have concessional loans. When Parliament was called for the emergency, you saw the 250 million. It's a concessional loan. If you get two of that, are you telling me you cannot build some of these things? Because if you are getting 250 million concessional loan, you can't take 20 million to start a women's bank. I mean, there will always be concessional loan from the World Bank and IMF. When you show goodwill and show that you are using the state's resources judiciously, that is when others will come and invest. And most of these things, also remember, you can partner the private sector to do it. Also remember that. You can partner most of the roads that we are talking about, most of the infrastructure that we are talking about. You can partner the private sector and do it in a very effective way. And we have so many examples of government partnership in some of these uh, social intervention programs that have worked. So believe me, Ghana, yes, we have challenges with resources. I can bet you if we can take off all the waste. And one of it, he said, he will do only 60 ministers. Let's hold him to it. He will do 60 ministers. If he keeps to doing 60 ministers, I can bet you the extra, the amount of money that we are going to save, if we keep a lean government, he says he's going to fight corruption within and without. If he keeps that promise, there will be enough resources to be able to do most of the things that we are talking about. When he was about ending his speech, he gave a caution. He said that it is up to you, um, members of parliament, the party in general, to make sure that you protect the ballot on December 7th. Are you promising to protect the ballot in the Aswansi constituency? If, if you followed everywhere, I've, I've been yesterday I was in Wenchi, I was in, uh, what do you call it, uh, Tafu. Almost everywhere we go, I keep telling our people, our best bet is to protect the last ballot paper. 
And the last ballot paper, how do we keep the ballot paper? Sometimes you finish counting the parliamentary, either the person loses or he wins, then they, they move away. When you do that, you are leaving space for others to do other mischief. Your aim is to stand until the last ballot paper is counted for. And I can bet you, we are prepared this time. We are ready. And I keep telling people, people think that oh, we are going to rely on the online uh, uh, coalition so they can hack it and mess it up. No, this time, believe me, we won't tell everybody what we are going to do. We'll be having a lot of parallel system running. We'll be running, we'll be doing online, we'll be doing manual to make sure that even if any of it fails, we still have the other. But I can assure you, we are recruiting very efficient pooling agents this time. And if I can tell you that the party has started recruiting agents three months ago, and they are going through a series of training, it tells you our readiness. We are ready, we've learned from our lessons, and we are very hopeful that our strategy to protect the last ballot, once Ghanaians vote for us, they should be rest assured. I know many people who go to play and they tell, even yesterday in Wenchi, one of the elders saying, you bro, are you sure you can protect the vote that will, will, will provide you? We are assuring them, trust us. We have learned our lesson. We will make sure that every single vote counts and it will be counted. Before I let you go, are you retaining the Asomasi seat after 20 years? By the grace of God. By the grace of God. Or oh, do you have a doubt? You came around. When you, see, when, you, when, you see, when you see the euphoria, do you have doubt? I believe that, I mean, I've been honored and I always thank Allah for that. That the people of Aswansi continue to trust me, and I can bet you by the grace of God. I mean, you know, I, I defy logic. When in my fifth term, people expect my vote to come down, yet I had the highest vote since I ever contested. I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic by the grace of God. History will repeat itself, inshallah. Thank you very much. And that is the Member of Parliament for the Aswansi constituency, the Honorable Muntaka Mubarak. Um, he has made mention or um, made emphasis on the the things that the NDC intends to do and voted into power for the Ghanaian women. We, we delved into how the NDC will possibly make way or make um, money to support all these initiatives and he has also um, said enough. He also came back or we came back to retaining the Asumasi seat. He has made mention of the fact that he's going to make sure that he retains the seat after 20 years. By his words, the NDC would make sure that um, the, the last ballot is counted and that they are going to protect every single ballot. These are the words of the former minority um, chief whip, that is the Honorable Munta Kamubarak, and, and also the Member of Parliament for the Asumase constituency. What happened today here in Kumase is the launch of the NDC's Women's Manifesto by the party's flag bearer, former President John Dramani Mahama, and its running mates, Professor Jainana Opoku Ajima. The party has made mention or um, highlighted what it intends to do when it comes to power in 2025, January 7th. Over to you. Thank you, Nana Bashi Adam, for bringing us that. Well, residents of Dungu, a suburb of Tamale in the Tamale South constituency, have heaped praises on the NPP parliamentary candidate, Musa Fuseni, and the flag wearer of the NPP, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, for reshaping a major road that connects the community to other parts of the area. The resident said the deplorable nature of the road used to be a nightmare to motorists, especially during the raining season. There's more in this report. Shaping of the major road in the Dungu electoral area comes as a relief to the people considering how deplorable the road used to be. The Dungu road links several communities including the University for Development Studies to the regional capital. But the bad nature of the road makes it difficult for commuters to use. Speaking to Joy News, a resident of Dungu, Rabia to Issa, said the road was so terrible it affected pregnant women who plowed the road. The terrible nature of the road made it so difficult for motorists to fly. Most pregnant women were unable to visit the hospital for antenatal care, but now we are happy. After the reshaping of the road, we are able to use it. We are grateful to Honorable Fuzi and Dr. Baumia. A former assemblyman for the area, Haruna Mumuni, said several appeals to the Member of Parliament for the Tamale South constituency did not yield any results. We have an MP who is former minority uh, leader, uh, Haruna, in the issue. He has been here for long, almost 20 years. 
And this road has been there for long. The Tungu community has been crying all the time. All I will come and help Tungu. UDS is in Tungu. Everything is in Tungu. The Volta Regional Secretary of the National Democratic Congress, James Gunu, has cast a damning verdict on Akufuado's two-term administration, describing it as worse than the oppressive rule of King Agokoli, who is widely known for his cruelty and tyranny. James Gunu, who urged the people of Anglo constituency to reject the MPP in the upcoming election due to their dismissal governance, made these remarks at a graduation ceremony for 19 apprentices in the Anlong constituency in the Volta region. Carlos Caloni has more in the following report. The event which guarded party faithfuls from the Volta region marked the graduation of 19 apprentices, the first batch of over a thousand youth from across the Anglo constituency, receiving vocational training in fields like tailoring, tiling and auto mechanics. The initiative championed by MP for Anglo, Richard Kwame Sepe is being implemented in over 15 communities with the goal of reducing the high unemployment rate plaguing the youth in the constituency. According to the MP, the program is crucial in equipping the youth with employable skills to secure their futures. Youth unemployment in Anglo constituency was on the high accidency. And uh, there is no way we can go over this than to go by some of these skills uh, acquisition. So I find interest in it, and this is the result you are seeing. Actually, I started with 1,026, and uh, about 100 of them could not continue. But I'm, I'm happy today because we have ended very well. If this number is needed to go by, it means I've been able to tackle parts. Though I have the intent of going into other skill areas in my next term of office. But this is what I want to do now, and this is what I've achieved. During the ceremony, Volta Regional NDC Secretary James Gunu commended the MP's efforts and took the opportunity to denounce Akufuado's administration, insisting it's worse than the oppressive rule of King Agokoli. The persecution that our forefathers went through under the King Agokoli cannot even be compared to what we are going through under President Nanado Danko Akufuado. Well, that's how we wrap up election brief. For more news, please log on to my journal. My name is Postina Sapo. Good afternoon.